I think what I'll be remembered for, and I guess I, I'd like to be remembered for uh, being, uh, being the, the governor who cut the taxes. Tonight, we remember the life and legacy of former Massachusetts Governor Paul Cellucci. Plus, Boston's food truck industry is cooking with gas, but is red tape keeping these mobile eateries from making dough? Now on Greater Boston. Good evening. Under the mournful cry of a bagpipe, the flag-draped casket of Argio Paul Cellucci was gently carried into the State House today. The former governor lost his battle with ALS this weekend, and this morning, friends, family, and dignitaries paid tribute to the modest man from Hudson. The funeral procession arrived at the State House precisely on time. Greeted by a state police honor guard, which escorted the casket up the state house steps, past fellow politicians and dignitaries who lined the broad stairway. Inside the house chambers, hundreds stood at attention while the body of former Governor Paul Argio Salucci was wheeled down the aisle. Among the VIPs stood Senate candidate Ed Markey and former governors Mike Dukakis, Mitt Romney, Jane Swift, and Bill Weld. Among the speakers, Jane Swift, who remembered Salucci as a man who instinctively helped women. With his executive power, he did usher in an era of leadership for women leading branches of government in our state. His appointment of Margaret Marshall as Chief Justice of the Massachusetts Supreme Court was bold, inspiring, and historic as she became the first woman to lead a branch of government in our state. And. He gave me the opportunity of a lifetime to govern the Commonwealth he loved. One time White House Chief of Staff Andy Card said Paul Salucci was a good man with three priorities, his family, his job, and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Micah 6-8 tells us to do justice. It tells us to love kindness. And it tells us to walk humbly. Paul Salusi loved justice, worked for kindness, and yes, he stood humbly. May God's blessings be on him. May the blessings that I felt from him envelop all of you. But leave it to former Governor Bill Weld to bring humor to the somber occasion. Paul and I were meeting at a welfare office in Lawrence with two dozen women who were receiving family assistance. On the wall behind us was a poster of Fabio, the Italian male supermodel and Gothic romance heartthrob. <laughs> Fabio was lying prone on the beach without a stitch of clothing, nothing on but the radio. <laughs> Eyeing the camera in an intense and suggestive way, I innocently asked the women whether the poster of Fabio reminded them of anyone in the room. <laughs> Every single one of them turned to look directly at Paul and blushed to the roots of their hair. After the memorial, one-time Senate President Billy Bulger remembered Paul Salucci as a governor who reached across the aisle. I still remember my own colleagues when I would say, well, somebody respond to uh, the minority leader, uh, Salucci, they would say, I'll do it, but it's going to be difficult because I agree with every word he says. <laughs> Paul Salucci's body was on view at the State House until this hour, where many dignitaries paid their respects following the service. It was open to the public after that. Tomorrow, Paul Salucci's family will hold a private burial in his hometown of Hudson. With me now are three who knew him well, UMass Worcester Chancellor Michael Collins, former state treasurer Joe Malone, and former House Speaker Tom Vinerant. Welcome to all of you. Everybody was there today. It was quite a service with all the former constitutional offices, all the officers, all the former uh, Senate and presidents, and y yourself was there. I mean, you were telling me at the service today, Tom, that one of the things that you enjoyed about him so much was that he was so much fun. That's something that I don't think a lot of us 
saw, but you did. Yeah, you don't. You didn't get to see that side of him unless you had the closer interaction. And I know Dr. Michael Collins yeah. did, obviously, in his final years. But we'd see him every Monday because we have those, you know, now notorious Monday meetings. There's governor and the lieutenant governor, speaker, Senate president. And with, with, with Governor Salucci, it was always, it always began off on a social note, oft times because he became famous for his movie reviews. He would do Oscar predictions, and, <laughs> and he'd be hitting 90%. Yeah. So we'd always ask him, gee, what did you see this weekend? What did you like? What don't you like? I accused him at one point, however, of being a politician movie reviewer. He never really said, oh, that movie stinks. Uh. <laughs> Everything was somewhere between pretty good and good. But when he really liked it, you knew. And that was one where he would say, oh, you know, so-and-so is going to win the Oscar. She's going to be the best actress for that performance. He was, And once you get into that kind of engaged conversation, human being to human being, not politician, not Democrat, Republican, that kind of conversation, <clears throat> everything else flows. You might be having a disagreement, a little bit of a disagreement on education or taxes or this or that. But... You've gotten through the kind of the uh, the walls that sometime are put up there. He was fabulous to work with. He really was fabulous. In the case of Paul, I, I really got to know him best after we both left uh, public life, and uh, we were both supporting Rudy Giuliani going All up right. to New Hampshire, two-hour ride up, two-hour ride back, and uh, it was all about family at that point in his life. He was so proud of his grandchildren, so crazy about where he was in life. He had had a very successful and, and, and uh, very... Um, rewarding uh, career and now he was just sitting back and enjoying it so much and for it to end the way it did to me it was always like mm -hmm. oh my goodness he had so much and my heart goes out to Jan and his family and Jan was an amazing caretaker to him throughout this whole yeah, difficult period. Myself personally. Michael a lot of people didn't get the chance to see the service and you were one of the speakers today I'd really like you to retell that story about when Paul Salucci and his wife Jan came to you the first time and it had not been made public yet that he had ALS, Luke Eric's disease, and he came to you and pick it up. It was, uh, you know, I've described it as one of the most momentous moments in my career, a moment I'll never forget when uh, he came. He was about ready to make his diagnosis public. And uh, he came to see me and he said, look, at, I've got this hor horrific diagnosis but I'd like to try to make something good out of it. And uh, one of the best things states, state government ever did, in his mind, was to create the University of Massachusetts Medical School. And he said, what I'd like to do is try to help you to raise money uh, so that we could actually try to find a cure for ALS. And I tried to caution him. I said, you know, Governor, there's going to be some pretty tough days ahead. You're going to have difficult times. You're going to get weak, and you're going to have a small amount of energy. And he, he got a little testy with me at the moment. And I, as I said this afternoon, he said, you know, Doctor, are you with me or not? It was sort of the politician coming out, you know. And uh, and uh, and I said to him, obviously I'm with you, but I just want you to be cautious uh, because it's going to be difficult. And with every fabric of his being over that two-year period, he uh, he worked hard to uh, to help raise this money. Yeah, we saw some of the pictures. He got Larry Lucchino on board, right. and he had that fundraiser at uh, Fenway. Uh, I Fenway mean Fenway night was. <clears throat> It really was. Everybody was so happy. I have to tell you, I was heartbroken because I knew what was coming. Mm. And he called me that morning to say uh, he was going to throw out the first pitch. And he called me that morning and said, Michael, I can't do it because um, uh, his hands had gotten quite weak. And they said, I'm going to need you to do it. Now, look at for a paper boy from Walpole, the chance to throw mm -hmm. out the first pitch at Fenway, Fenway Park was something, you know, I would have never, ever have imagined I could mm. do. But... Uh, we actually staged it so no one could see the fact that he actually couldn't hold the ball. It was uh, was really a shrill reminder of the insidious nature That's of ALS. Awful. Yeah. Somebody said to me today when I was standing outside in the State House steps waiting for the procession that it was only 10 years ago, and it seems like, you know, so much has changed, not only in state politics, I mean, you can all address this, yeah. but in national politics, and you talked about, you know, the friendliness and the social, it, it's not like that anymore. And I mean, our, our governor is very affable and social, but I mean, even having those traits doesn't make it any easier. It was just more naturally that way. Uh, no, no doubt about it. I mean, you could do battle, but it was not 
personalized and it didn't become a chronic problem. You just say, hey, you know, I, I disagreed with him on that, and now let's move to the next subject. And Paul, though, in particular, was incredibly good at rebuilding bridges. Again, I, I, I ran against him, and he was so magnanimous about reaching out. And, you know, when my mother died, which was shortly after the 98 election, he was there at the wake, and he'd call me on certain things. He was just terrific like that. He understood uh, interpersonal relations very, very well. I think a part of that actually comes from his time in the legislature. You learn it very quickly. And if you don't learn it in the legislature, you're never going to get it. Because if you can't get over whatever the tension or the struggle is of that day and begin to connect to people on multiple levels in other ways, you're just going to fail. So he was a creature of the House. He was a creature of the Senate. He became governor. He became ambassador. And you and I talked a little bit about this. Uh, you know, everybody talks about his, his humility and his modesty. And yet he was as ferocious as a lion on something that he believed. Education, accountability, the testing standards. Well, wow. Bill Weld, Paul Salucci, they were fabulous. Now, they had great allies. They had uh, President Bulger, Speaker Flaherty, President Birmingham, Speaker DeMacy, people like that. But you saw it coming together. So to Joe's point... Things were less partisan, I think, on the real important things. They came together, and Paul had that way about him. So he could fight and would fight like a lion, but it's, it's still at the same time be a good listener and find the reasonable middle ground. And as was pointed out today, as a Republican in Massachusetts who ran at the rep level, ran at the statewide level, never lost an election. So that tells you. A Republican we, in Massachusetts. I know. And, and right? the other thing yeah. that he broke the barrier outside of 128. Right. Because yes. his whole, usually it's, that, you know, anything west of, you know, well, Newton, Newton. is considered, yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. is considered, you know, the, the, the boondocks and people don't get very far. So just going back to, I mean, he called a lot of attention mm -hmm. to the new Mass Medical Center. I mean, we all went out there and did interviews with yes. him there mm -hmm. rather than, you know, going into his home. He felt comfortable I and mean, he wanted to call. It. That is one remarkable facility. It is. It's an extraordinary institution. And uh, and the governor was, uh, uh, you know, played a big role in how it's currently organized and how it currently works. And I don't think in a million years he would have ever, when he signed that legislation, that he would ever think that he would then have to come back to mm -hmm. us as a patient. One of the world's foremost ALS researchers is our chief of neurology, and many patients, many of the 5,000 new uh, diagnose, patients diagnosed a year with ALS come to our medical school to be seen, among many other diseases. And, and he was uh, an enormous champion for the school because he was so proud of what, uh, what the university has actually created. You know, there must have been something in his character, too, to be able to go through that disease with that kind of dignity because... It is demoralizing and dehumanizing in a lot of ways. I mean, you and lose I, I, all I, of your functions. I never saw him other than optimistic the entire time he had disease, with the, the exception, as I said today, of that one phone call at the end just a few weeks ago. Hmm. And he wasn't concerned about himself, and he wasn't concerned that, you know, he saw that the end was coming near. What he was concerned about was he hadn't finished raising the money that he wanted to hmm. raise. That was the level of his concern. He gave so much hope to other people. I can't tell you how many ALS patients said to yeah, me, I know with you. his being public mm -hmm. really, it, it gave them hope because they said if he could do it, then perhaps they could muscle through I it. I did speak know. to his doctor today, too, who yeah. said that there are, they have made progress, but clearly not enough. I think Joe was right when he mentioned Jan, too. I think a lot of the strength and the dignity that you saw with Governor Salucci these last two and a half years of the public, the public journey, difficult journey that he was on, a lot of that came from his dad. His dad was a little local legend out mm. there in and around Hudson and Central Mass. And Jan is fabulous, mm. just fabulous. Donna and I had actually, we took a couple of trade missions with the governor and, and, and Jan, uh, one to Europe and one to Japan and Australia. And uh, you could see there was a kind of a strength. That was before any bad diagnosis. This is when he was at, mm. at the top of his game. But there was a, a strength there and a, a spirit. Yeah, and he told funny wonderful. stories. I can't remember who told it about... Hudson, about people who had never been to Hudson, and he got them out there. And actually, Billy Bolter told us a story, too, that he got him to go out to Hudson. Hudson. Because, I mean, let's face it, people don't go out to that part of the state. You know, if you're here, you don't go there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. To, uh, to Tom's point, uh, there's an extraordinary relationship <clears throat> in, a, uh, in a family when one person is, is very mm -hmm. sick, and, and the spouse or the other family member is often forgotten. Um, and all the attention was on Paul, yeah. and Jan wanted it that way, but she was so supportive of him throughout mm -hmm. the entire illness. It was really an extraordinary relationship to learn from. 
Yeah, I think also today, speaking of relationships, seeing Bill Weld up there, yeah. they, they were a perfect I fit know. because Bill was an outsider at the yeah. State House, and Paul was, uh, as his co-governor or lieutenant governor, was the one who who knew the, his way around uh, Beacon Hill, and the two of them combined so that it was really a, a one-two punch that was very, very he effective. He was really, really moved today. I mean, he was yeah. you know, oh, Bill wiping was. his eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was touched by the standing ovations for... Jane, Jane Swift. Swift. Yeah. That that was really was remarkable. Nice. That was a long, long, because she was given a tough ride. Did you hear the catch in her voice? Yeah. I mean, that's but that's the media gave her a tough time. Politicians right. gave her a tough right. time. Yep. She yeah. had. And it was almost a, a case of people saying, you know what, you, you we're sorry, you didn't deserve yeah. that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And she did not. Yeah. She yeah. did not. Yeah. And she she sat there for it had to be a minute and a half. People mm -hmm. were applauding. You know, it's interesting in the in the bare knuckle world of politics. Every once in a while, an event takes place where you say, you know what, we're all human. Humans and people mm -hmm. fight for what they believe in, but don't lose sight of the fact that the, in most cases, what they're seeking is something good at the end of the road. And today was kind of the reminder that uh, there's some good stuff too. So we All talked. Right, about, we talked about Kipling and Kipling's great line about walk with kings and keep the common touch. So he knew presidents, yeah. he knew prime ministers, he knew ambassadors, he knew Senate presidents and governors galore and speakers, and yet. The kid from Hudson. Yeah. He was always the and kid from the way, Hudson. And a good yeah. kid. And never a became jaded. He was always like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like it was <laughs> like a kid in the candy store. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Tom Finneran, Joe Malone, Michael Collins. Thank you so much.